Hello and welcome. Our today's topic is uh, founding balanced founding team and uh, early recruits. Uh, in today's world, anybody with a wonderful business model have access to unlimited amount of fund. The only factor that differentiate business model particular venture to particular venture is the balanced skill uh, of the team who are behind this drive. So, today's discussion will be the importance of founding members and then what issues are to consider for selecting co-founders. The light, later part we are discussing about early employees and what are the decide, how to decide about early employees, the factors that drives. Victor Hugo famously said, there is one thing stronger than all armies in the world and that is an idea whose time has come. But then, suppose you have the idea, but you do not have the people to implement, then you will render yourself a bystander looking at others who will take a cue from you and implement the idea and enjoy the cream. You remain mute a spectator. So, the team idea and then there should be a team to execute the idea before anybody can copy and execute it better is very important. A team consists of individuals with complementary skills. Once you decide about the kind of business at, that you are going to do, what your vision is, then obviously you know what kind of business you are going to do and you have to really make an inventory of the skills that you are going to need. So, people should be committed to a common goal towards achieving the vision. A high level of collaboration, a kind of coherent team is absolutely necessary. A great team should collectively have all critical competences necessary for efficient execution of the business model. Obviously, you are going to target a common goal, not that different people have different goal. Like if somebody wants to exit quickly with lot of money, if others want to create a sustainable value, you are in trouble. Initial recruitment decision should also be based on missing skills, not really just to recruit some people. We will talk about that moving forward. Understanding the risk associated with startup, just by looking at a startup from outside is so very difficult, it is impossible. But you can draw a simile between a startup risk associated with, an start, with a startup and this rafting on a turbulent uh, canal or somewhere in a re turbulent river. Here, everybody survives not for self, but they survive for everybody else. Because if they lose one person, there is a lesser possibility that all of all of the rest will survive. So, they have to make sure that everybody survives. So, similar kind is the, the situation or the context in a startup, where everybody works together for common prosperity, for common benefit, for common for solving common challenges. There is no individualistic approach in startup and that it, that drives uh, the, the qualities of start or co-founders. Some experts make a simile between uh, finding co-founders with finding a, a kind of match for marriage, but then startup faces greater challenges than even than, uh, than a uh, life partner means finding a life partner the challenges that you face because there are so many things that you kind of adjust in your personal life, but you cannot do that in a, in a company where everything is external. So, it adjusting does not really make a company viable. So, you have to look at that. About 70 percent of the ventures rejected by VCs, because they find that uh, the team is not coherent or they do not have balanced skills and uh, they, they, they are not committed, meaning that they are uh, not integrated well. So, that kinds of uh, is the 
uh, is a message that that talks about the importance of co-founder and the uh, the necessity for coherent and and balanced skill. So it is obviously it is assumed that you know what kind of business you are going to do, what vision you are targeting. So you know the the, the skills necessary, as I said at the beginning. So you know what kind of skills or what kind of people with what skill you are going to look for. New ventures are is, is replete with risk, enormous uncertainty. So, co-founders and early employees and mentors, they can break many barriers that uh, a startup faces. They help to overcome many problems. And in today's world, as I said, team is the greatest differentiator and it is easy to really find better team than trying to create differentiation in uh, through some other means. Life of a lone founder, sole founder can be very lonely because you are faced with ups and downs, challenges. You want somebody to bounce your idea off and share the challenges and somebody can actually help you to get rid of your, your depression or uh, frustration. So, you need at least one co-founder to get going strong means to have a, a strong path moving forward. Your hard skill, your talent, your vision, passion, courage, everything is prerequisite, but then they are not good enough. They can take you so far. You need a co-founder who will exploit all your skills and all his or her skills and then help you to move forward. Steve Jobs, Larry Page, Elon Musk would not have become so great had they not invested enormously in building teams, both at the beginning and moving forward all through their, their career. Edison famously said that the credit of his 2332 patent and commercializing so many technologies goes to the team who spearheaded the development of them. Sam Altman is of the view that two co-founders or two to three perhaps is the best uh, combination. If they are single or if they are more than three kinds of suboptimal, two or three perhaps is the optimum size of the team. But then without long acquaintance, one must not select a co-founder and lone co-founder, lone founder is absolutely avoidable. Sam Altman is kind of uh, the supreme authority about it because he has mentored about 1000 big, big companies. So, obviously, when there is no theory, this experience actually is trustable. So, we go by that, but then just for the sake of having more than one co-founder, you should not compromise off on, on your, uh, your similarity with them, your acquaintance with them. You, you should gel well, they should gel well and, and as we will be seeing moving forward. Here are some quotations, particularly from Barn Schooner. He is uh, from MIT and he has written a book famous book and this is widely referred. So, whatever he says perhaps carry a lot of weight. Most importantly, you found you select a co-founder thinking that okay, let us see, but remember one thing. Once you get somebody as co-founder and then uh, or maybe you do not find a co-founder, you start alone and move little forward it becomes very difficult to find a co-founder later and then integrate that person with your company. This person may come with some kind of mental blockade, some idiosyncrasy, some preconceived notion and he or she may not gel well. And experience shows that it is very difficult to really induct a co-founder later on. 
co-founder are the best people to sell your company, meaning sell your product, acquire customer, etc. So it's very much necessary that you find a co-founder at the very beginning. Sam says, if you do not have long acquaintance with a person and you kind of induct him or her as a co-founder, it's always going to be fatal. Here is how Google actually teamed up. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, they met at Stanford. Larry was 22, Sergey Brin was 21 and then they met at Stanford. Larry came for doing PhD there. So, Larry means Sergey Brin was taking Larry around the campus and then gradually they got to know each other and then gradually they realized that the Stanford uh, University is using some kind of a uh, search engine for their library. Uh, they realized that this is not efficient, so they started developing jointly and then eventually they came up with uh, a new search engine. And that actually started uh, becoming the company called Google. Even before they started the company, just looking at the kind of technology they were working at and that and the couple of persons they are so, so their devotion, etc. The co-founder of Sun Microsystem wrote a check of one lakh dollar even before Google was formed. That is the power of a wonderful team and a wonderful idea. Co-founders should bring this kind of, this is not an exhaustive lit list, but then it is very important that they, they bring the drive for moving forward, they bring entrepreneurial instinct, the domain knowledge, the business process, management skill, intelligence, creativity, they have a track record meaning that they worked somewhere and they have delivered, they have that credential. And there are people who cannot actually work in a team. So, they must demonstrate that they have collaborated in a team earlier and they must share the same vision. Meaning, you have some vision and you are trying to promote a company, others should share the same vision means that should be their vision as well. There are more important means these are again putting in a nutshell that a team must have a product expert, meaning if you are developing a product whether it is an android app or you are developing a hardware product, there must be one product expert. He is called the prima donna or the superstar. Suppose in a drama or in a music concert, there will be one who leads the show, it is called the prima donna. So, there should be a product expert who is absolutely authoritative about the product and he is, he is he has deep knowledge on that. There should be a leader, not necessarily the product expert, but who have sway, has sway on the entire team, so that he can mitigate any kind of interpersonal crisis at any point of time. So that the team always remain a, an integrated team, not really partially going this side, partially going the other side. An industry expert the person who knows how the industry is going, going to what direction, what is the technology moving forward, technological changes, how the technology has changed so far, so that you remain ahead of the competition in terms of technology. A marketing expert, marketing is the most important part in a startup, in a startup, because unless you can sell something, whatever good idea you have, it is not going to matter at all you have to be able to sell, only then you have a business. Finance expert is critical, because if you need money, when you are going to need money, a finance expert is going to say that, that on such and such time, we are going to need so much amount of money and it is their responsibility to raise money in time. If you need money after two months or so, they will take action today, so that before expiry of two months, money is there in your bank account. A person with a fat purse is always welcome, because when you need money, if uh, there is no access to money, at, at least there will be a stop gap. Issues to, to, be, to be considered for building a team. Team size, we said two to three, 
a leader to break deadlock is kind of a repetition. History of founding working in a stressful situation is a new addition. That means, people do not lose their temper, they do not break down under stress. Then founders goal, as I said somebody want to ex exit early, somebody wants a sustainable value, sustainably contribute value to the society and eventually be rich. So, if there is conflict there is a problem. Other issues like CEO, there should be one man whom everybody kind of obeys, so that there is any time, any crisis there is one man to resolve the crisis. Equity philosophy means, how you are going to share equity among, among members. At the same time, equity philosophy also says that the reward should be proportional to contribution. If somebody is more responsible, somebody is contributing more, bringing more uh, skills, bringing more fund etcetera should be equally or proportionately rewarded. Shared vision, shared values, shared values, common core values make a team strong core values is how you treat your employees, how you treat your customers, how you work jointly in a team etcetera. Then everybody should be committed, meaning that you become a co-founder and you come to attend a meeting and just uh, criticize some people and go away, it is not like that. Everybody should, should be committed to contribute, to uh, remain uh, associated with the company at at good times and bad times, mix of skill, trust, confidence, likability. Otherwise, team will not remain single team. Founders needs to be unflappable, meaning, meaning they are unaffected at situation of adversities, they are calm, but then they are tough. If they have to be tough under certain situation, they will be tough they know what to do in every situation. They act quickly, they are decisive, they are creative and they are ready to take any challenge. That is what Sam Altman said. To succeed a team should have all the required talents, knowledge, organizational clout, experience, technical know-how needed to get the job done. Very importantly, the founders must have the quality of communicating effectively across the length and breadth of the company. So, that whatever is the vision of the founders that is kind of percolated down to the bottom and then communication actually helps everybody else to understand what they are supposed to do, what management expect them to perform, by performing what they get the reward. So, Communication should be very, communication does not mean just speak spoken English capability, it also means how effectively you communicate. You should not be prevaricating or you know confusing people by, by, by ineffectively communicating you can actually make con create confusion and then somebody will say that we are supposed to do this, other people will say no it is not that. So, that creates confusion. You need an analytical thinker, they will make sure that everything is executed properly. Sharing knowledge and skill is very important, because you have a small team. Suddenly, somebody leaves the company and you will lose the skill. More importantly, you as founders may not have the time to execute all the time. So, you have to train your people working under you. and make them capable enough to replicate your skill and only then the company will grow in a, in a synergistic way and they, everybody will be able to create value. A test to understand whether everybody share the same vision is to ask everybody to pitch. If you see that different people are pitching differently, you should know that you are going nowhere. So, you need to revisit the entire thing. The goal is not just vision, goal is to execute, take actions to attain the vision in the long term. So, execution is very important, performance is very important. Every member should contribute as I said, 
it should not be just you know attending meeting and gi giving attendance. But then it is not always easy to find co-founders who will actually be a balanced member, will, will, will have synergy with your company. It is a very difficult thing. This is the experience of Schooner who wrote that book we mentioned at the beginning. Schooner was, was studying at MIT and they have, he has another two members with whom he actually worked for uh, several years. And then they thought that we have the right chemistry to work together and we can actually create successful enterprises and they started well. But when they received the first amount of money, then people's priority changed. Somebody who was kind of, who had a long term vision about the company suddenly became greedy and this just wanted that we should immediately you know salvage whatever money we can and then sell the company. So, they started fighting, they f started fighting so much that the company went berserk and they had to shut down the company something like that. So, it is very important. CEO has at least the following job, everything the founders do become a culture meaning that suppose you are ethical, you are honest this message will automatically percolate down to the level of a P1 or, or the gatekeeper. It is very simple and very, very true that anything that the top boss does that becomes the order, that becomes the standard for the entire company. So, the CEO has that responsibility, whatever action he or she takes, whatever culture he or she kind of bring and inculcate and, and try to dis, that to kind of convey to the entire company that becomes a standard and people start following that. They set the vision obviously, they raise money, they evangelize meaning that they convert ordinary person into customer, they convert ordinary employee into super employees. So, evangelize is in is a kind of conversion. So, they convert some ordinary people into whatever they want them to be. They hire, they manage, they set the execution bar meaning that they execute whatever they are, they execute, they execute it in a manner that everybody follow that, emulates that, that whatever they do meaning they do it fast, others also try to follow the same pace. They make sure that the entire company executes meaning that they execute as a team and, and they are coherent, they are kind of uh, glued together. So, they have a common goal for doing anything. Very important in this lecture is founders mentality. What is founders mentality? Three components define founders mentality. One is they have insurgent mentality. Insurgent means they are very fast and furious they are customer focused, they are agile and adaptable. So, they are fast, they, they, they never uh, divert their attention from the customer and they are adaptable to customer needs and uh, aspirations. One is insurgent mentality, the second one is uh, they are uh, they have owner's mindset meaning that they take responsibility of whatever they do number one. Number two is they, they, they feel that anything and everything that is happening in the company uh, they, they should be kind of responsive to that. And the third one is front line obsession which means that they are highly customer focused and if there is a customer they will make sure that the customer eventually purchase they do not go away, they will, they will kind of convert anybody who is approaching them as a customer. So, they are obsessed that anybody approaching them will be get will be converted into a customer. So, these three actually defines founders mentality, found these people means if you want to be a founder you have to have this mentality or if you have some early recruits they will inculcate in them this founders mentality you will find that they are behaving like founders. 
And what is a founder? They have insurgent mentality or insurgent mission and they have they have kind of uh, owner's mindset meaning they are responsible. If something is getting wasted, they will immediately object or they will take action so that it is not wasted. They will even challenge the founder that you should not take this action is going to be detrimental to the company. They will be so much of entrepreneurial founders mentality and they will always think that customer can never be wrong. If customer is demanding something, the company must provide that. Company must be able to match customer needs, demand and requirements. If that is not possible, then there is no business, something like that. So, speed of execution, focus to value proposition, owner's mentality, front line objection. These three things are absolutely important for anybody to become a founder. And any employee who demonstrate this are priceless for a company. Next part is about early hires. Early hire means first thing is to remember that hiring a person may be may not be so very difficult, but if you have to ever fire a person because of non performance or maybe not synergistic or maybe the person is not really gelling well with the team, it becomes very, very difficult to fire for whatever reason. So, that is why you should be absolutely careful about hiring the person. Number two is hiring is going to require payment of salary, it is going to be a huge amount of salary because every month there is a cash outflow and at the end means not only just the salary then there will be employee benefits and eventually if you terminate some point of time there will be terminal benefits. So, it is a huge cost that you are going to incur. So, you have to be very careful not to incur this cost if you can avoid doing that. You should recruit only when it is absolutely necessary particularly when you have some skill gap which is preventing you from moving forward. So, go ahead and hire, otherwise you just delay the process. You should see if a person has the right skill, is he among the top 5 percent of the people, can he take risk or he is afraid of risk, can he work with other people, does he respect others etcetera look how Mark Jacoburg hire people. He hires people who are smart, they get things done. He would like to understand whether he will like to spend time with this guy or he is obnoxious or he has some, some repelling uh, personality. He particularly prefers a person under whom Jacoburg himself will like to report. Those who are obsessed with implementation. You give a problem and they will definitely come up with a solution. As long as there is no solution, perhaps they will not sleep something like that. They are manically determined that I will definitely find solution for that. And people with good communication skill, again communication skill means communicate effectively, clearly, rightly, not really creating confusion. Early recruits should be talented, they have founders mentality, you have to see whether this man is going to be something like a going to have the feeling as if he is the owner. Talents are li limited in supply, being at early stage you are at a disadvantage situation because you know very few people would like to work in a startup which is faced with lot of uncertainty. So, they, they kind of like to avoid, but then Thankfully, there are people who think that they are going to contribute to a company that will make or break a company, meaning that their contribution, contribution is so critical for survival or growth of a company, some company becomes the next maybe LinkedIn or something. So, he will have that kind of privilege or that uh, kind of charm or, or whatever to say that yes, I created this company at the beginning. 
So, that is the advantage, but then it is very difficult to find them. How are you going to find them? Just putting an advertisement and expecting them to seek you out is not possible. You have to seek them out. Then they should share the same vision. Batchmate co-workers are perhaps the best option. Many of them like to feel excited about a startup culture or openness of the atmosphere in a startup. Particularly, they feel that they are main contributor to the business. Then uh, it is an open culture as I said and they kind of get a chance to work in an entire life cycle of a, of a product starting from the idea stage to finally, go to market it is a huge experience. <coughs> Many of this kind of people they think that they will become entrepreneur at some point of time, but they want to get this uh, hands on experience or be, be, be part of this whole value chain. So, that they know what to look for, what kind of risks to look for, what kind of challenges and what excitement. So, as I said firing is very difficult. So, be very clear that you whosoever is sitting before you is the right person. And as I said recruit only when you are scaling or balancing shortage of skill, skill deficit or you are diversifying into new areas or you are working so hard with the existing team that you are busting at the seams. Meaning, unless there is somebody else taking some load from others it is not going to work. Do not go for vanity metric like we have so many employees that actually set you back in terms of payment of salary eventually there will be so much of cash burn that you would not be able to sustain. Hiring takes time. So, take action in advance. At the same time you should prepare yourself what kind of skills you are looking for. Normally, there is a short there is an acronym called CAPS C stands for capacity A subsumes many many qualities like self motivated adaptability to change ethics team player hard working knowledge seeking self assured passionate etcetera. P stands for personality again personality also subsumes many and S stands for skill particularly technology skill that a person brings. Take a marketing approach meaning that say there are 10 potential employees. So, tell a story so that the right person that you are looking for become attracted to your story and then agrees to work for you. You do not really advertise that is costly number one and difficult to find people because the right talent may not even see the advertisement. So, you participate in a hackathon where this kind of people actually gather or use your peer network, social media etcetera, but then do reference check for their antecedent to make sure that you do not fall prey to acting by a, a wrong person. Check if the person is a super performer, try hiring and retaining the best talent even at a high, high cost. You give be kind of uh, generous to give equity to the right candidate, because they may actually drive the company moving forward, meaning they may make or break the company. So, be liberal giving them money equity, rather than becoming liberal with investors. Check if the company mission is aligned with them, if in doubt never recruit if in doubt. Later you may say that yeah I have had a hunch but I thought this guy was talking nice. So, I recruited that does not help you be 100 percent sure that you actually want to hire him or her. There are many many ways to test skill pair programming is one of them like you make two person sit together one of your employee another in some uh, potential candidate and then ask them to write the same code or one part written by one guy the other part written by you can read them google them and find out. If an employee is not effective or in a troublemaker you identify after recruitment fire him or her immediately. The best time is now do not wait for a good time, because the, the one minute delay actually make it more complex for you as well as for the employee whom you are trying to fire. 
So, another thing is that you must continuously train them. Nobody is born manager, nobody is going to kind of learn from you, you have to train them and then they are going to deliver to you only. So, spend time and energy and money to train. Another thing to remember is that when you are recruiting somebody, look for cultural integrity, cultural mix. One person of a different culture may spoil the entire team or maybe the new person will not be effective at all. Some references that you can look for and then uh, some few comments on concluding remarks. That is all. Thank you very much.